these guys some more. And now they're bringing back Summers. And guy, these guys have been dead wrong for 10 years. And now we're saying, oh, solve our problems. I mean, this is a two. You should be worried, very worried, Mary. At least I am very worried about the future of America. Well, it's interesting. Right around the time you were thinking of putting your home on the market in New York, uh, Hank Paulson was saying our economy has never in better has never been in better shape. This was about a year ago. Uh, he was saying that, and in, in, in so many ways, it seemed like how can he be saying this when we started to see that is when the subprime mortgages were starting to unwind, and we were already starting to see major cracks. People like me who are not in the system were starting to see major cracks. Clearly, you saw them. You were, you were willing to make such a major move in your own life. Well, as I said, under oath, he's been down in Washington every week saying, don't worry, everything is fine. We've solved the problems. There's no more problems. And Bernanke, the same thing. I mean, every time they open their mouths, they have been dead, dead wrong. If they were stock market investors, they'd have been bankrupt, you know, many, many, many weeks ago. And maybe Why we ought to consider compensation to on, uh, on those terms right <laughs> in the federal government, which is something uh, that might uh, yield better results. Well, unlikely. And Washington is a place where you don't have to be held accountable, where you don't. It doesn't matter whether you're right or wrong. It just matters whether you can get elected or fool other people. There's a better way. And sadly, that's what's happening on Wall Street as well. No, Dad, definitely, definitely. And the poor people on Wall Street, they get to keep their Maseratis. If I make a mistake, they t- I don't even have a car. The but top people did, do. There's, right, a, but- there's teams of people, as you know, uh, tens of thousands. It'll be in the hundreds of thousands when we're done of the people who are not at the top who are losing their job right oh, now. Oh, no, no, of course. It's, it's mm-hmm. painful. It's sad mm-hmm. to see. But we have a long period of excess in America. And unfortunately, when you have a long period of excess, you have to clean up the system. I mean, never before in world history that I know were people, able, were people able to buy a house with no money down. Many people bought four or five houses with no money down and no job. And then the bankers were having so much fun, they said, let's do this with car loans and credit card loans and student loans and LBO, everything they could think of. And let's do this with models of loans as opposed (laughs) to real loans. Exactly. Well, okay. You have to, when you have a system like that, and that goes on for a long time, unfortunately, somebody's got to clean up and somebody's got to suffer. Is it good? No, it's not good. But otherwise, if you try to put Band-Aids on a cancer payment, pay patient for another year or two or three, it's going to be a whole lot worse in the end. That's right. Now, let's talk about the regulation side of this, because you have been a student of the market. You have been a participant in the market and still are. There's so much that you bring to the situation. There needs to be more eyes on what is going on, proper eyes on what is going on, and and perhaps different regulation. What would you like to see if you were able to write how we will watch these companies in the types of products that are on the market, uh, in the, the way they're sold, what would you like to see? Well, Mary, it's not regulation. We've have, we have regulation. It's the regulated companies that have caused the problems. It's the regulated banks. The but regulated unregulated products within these companies, like AIG, no, no. their insurance business is fine. It was when they were getting in the, t- into derivatives. But, but the I regulators did. are supposed to look at the whole package. You're supposed mm-hmm. to say, is this a solvent insurance company? Is this a solvent bank? This is what they've been doing. No, it's the regulated people who are failing. And the reason is because the regulators didn't have a clue. And the ones that did said, Alan Greenspan is on record as saying all these derivatives are good for the system. That makes the system better. They don't have a clue what's going on. The reason everything failed, Mary, is because Greenspan and his friends would not let the market work. If he had let people, if he had let long-term capital management fail, I assure you, Lehman Brothers would still be around. Bear Stearns would still be around because they would have been hit so badly in 1998 that they wouldn't have been able to do all of these things. And a lot of their incompetent people would be long gone. Mm -hmm. If he had let people fail in the 90s, if he had let people fail, we wouldn't have these problems right now because none of this garbage ever would have happened. The reason it's happening is he never let the market work. He never let people fail. People would call him up. You may have heard of something on Wall Street that came to be a term called the Greenspan put. That means... If we get into trouble, Mr. Green, we just call him Mr. Greenspan. He'll take care of it. We can do anything we want. And they did, and everything they'd call him, you know what we're doing now, Mr. Greenspan? He'd say, what? And they said, blah, blah, blah. He said, that's wonderful. He'd go out and make a public statement and say, it's great what they're doing on Wall Street and in the banking system. We think it's good. He didn't have a clue either. I, I mean, in so many ways, we were thinking that he was so much smarter than the rest of us that no, he no, had no, it all no, figured no. out. Don't say we. 
No, no, no. Ms. Okay, Don't maybe not you, no. but a whole lot of other people. Well, a whole lot of other people said he has his, he he can get his mind around this. He can he comprehends what's being done. And then uh, clearly, you know, he thought essentially by we were spreading the risk, therefore it, it was going to be better for the system as opposed to that risk being spread, taking everybody down with it globally. You are bad for my nervous system when you say good <laughs> things about Dr. Green. I'll have to tell you, very bad for my nervous system and for all of your viewers. I hope for their <laughs> nervous systems too. That's what he said, but he didn't know what he was doing. Everything he ever said in his whole career, you know, he he never made it in the private sector. The only reason he made, got these jobs, he kept going to Washington getting jobs because every time he had a private sector job, it failed. He failed, mm -hmm. so he kept lobbying for government jobs. That's what happened. As many of the people in the government are like that. And I think a lot of with the public, you know, there's a lot of Americans don't understand really what's going on, and it's not that they're stupid, they may be wonderful surgeons, great auto mechanics, they're really good at what they do, but when it comes to what is happening on Wall Street, they don't understand it, so they don't know. Henry Paulson sits uh, and, and does a speech, they don't understand half of what he's saying because it's jargon that they don't live. So it's hard for the American public to say what's right and what's wrong in this situation. We now know that Mr. Paulson doesn't understand half of what he said either. We now know that Dr. Greenspan, none of these guys understand. I mean, listen, the head of the central bank is named Bernanke in America. He doesn't understand economics. He doesn't understand markets. He doesn't understand finance. I've seen him under oath say things on the television that I fall off my chair. I can't believe that this man would say that in public. He's either a liar or a fool. Well, we don't think he's a liar because he was under oath. And you're a smart guy, right? Okay, so you understand no, no. what he's saying. If someone at home is, I'm not in that industry. If it's too complicated for them to understand, does that mean that it's not the right thing? Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, how do we get Americans more, uh, I guess, participating more in what is going on as far as the decision-making process, to holding the people accountable? There's a sense that they just don't know enough, and, and maybe they do, maybe they don't. What's your feeling? Well, the, the, we start with by making people accountable. When they fail, they fail. I mean, I wish life were such that nobody ever failed. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Gosh, it would be great if I never made a mistake, and if I did make a mistake, somebody would come along and, and take care of it. I don't even do that for my little girls. I say, when you make a mistake, we have to learn from those mistakes. We can't just say, oh, you didn't make a mistake. So that's the first place. Second, you've got to start with education. I mean, America spends huge amounts on education, but it's not being spent on education. It's being spent on a lot of other things. We, our, our kids score number 22 in the world when we take the test against the rest of the world. And yet we spend huge amounts of money, but it's not going to teachers or to education. So we've got to start with responsibility, we've got to start with real education, and we've got to start making people accountable. If you, if you make people accountable, then this won't happen anymore. When people fail, they fail. And so in other words, Americans understand. don't need to necessarily understand everything that's going on. We just need to have people who we elect who are going to hold these people accountable. Well, absolutely. Most countries in the world, when you make a mistake, the, the treasury person resigns, or the, who have, would have the cabinet minister resigns, or the parliamentarian resigns. In America, that's not what they do. They go on TV to people like you and say, I'm sorry, I'm very sorry, forgive me. And when we say, okay, we forgive him, he starts over. That's not the way it should work. Well, we're not even getting that this round, at least not so far. <laughs> you're right. You're we right. haven't Nobody, done an apology yet. Nobody's even sorry this time <laughs> right, around. Right. And you've called for Ben Bernanke to resign. In fact, to